How does hockey inspire author Leslie Kruger? Let's find out. <laughs> but How does hockey? Do you want to do that again? Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, because I heard you, it said you were an avid member of the Women's Hockey League. So that's my first question is to ask you about that. Hockey, I love. Hockey has inspired some work. I, I wrote a short story called The Hockey Stalker about this really weird man who started stalking our Women's Hockey League. He had a fetish for women's hockey players. So all sorts of really weird stuff can go on <laughs> if you play hockey. Um, but uh, it was based on that. It, it, the story diverged, of course, as it does. Um, mainly how hockey helps my fiction is by keeping me grounded and real and out in the world because <laughs> all sorts of readers and real people, real women. I play with women. I, I no longer play with men. I used to, but it, eh, it gets a bit rough. Um, so it's nice to meet people who read, who teach, who own active Green and Ross franchises, who are, you know, do all sorts of things in the world. We've had cops, we've had prosecutors, we've had everybody you can imagine. So um, I guess that feeds into my writing in the sense that it makes me feel part of a community. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a brief little pause here and say to everyone before we continue and learn more about author Leslie Kruger, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel because interviews are posted bi weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays, second and fourth week of every month and you don't want to miss out these incredible stories behind the books and uh, welcome everyone to all about canadian books i'm so excited because this week my guest is author leslie kruger um leslie is a novelist and a screenwriter she is the author of five novels and seven books a prolific filmmaker 16 films over 16 years, ranging from micro budget shorts to studio feature features. So she has been very, very busy. And besides a passion for hockey, we'll be chatting about her novel Times Squared, which was published by ECW Press. And here is a little taste of what Times Squared is about. Eleanor loves Robin again and again and again, yet they never quite get to be together. From early Roman Britain to contemporary Toronto, Eleanor and Robin's love story leaps through time as society and circumstances conspire to thwart them. But Eleanor has always had headaches and visions, flashes of other eras when she knows she hasn't lived. Or has she? After coming to realize that she is a pawn, Eleanor dares to confront the chess master. Can she free herself from a strange cosmic game so that she and Robin can finally be together? You have to read Times Squared to find out. Eleanor, or Eleanor helps. Oh my goodness. Leslie, welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you so much, Crystal. It's lovely to be here. I am thrilled to meet you. And after reading your novel, I have to know, have you always been interested in history? Yes. I mean, I unfortunately, looking back, wished that I'd studied it in university. I kept jumping around from majors, from creative writing to English, to political science, to East Asian studies. And if it had occurred to me to land on history, I think my life would have been quite different. I didn't even notice what I read, which was history. And um, it's fascinating. Now in Times Squared, I, I mean, I was, I studied history. So I really enjoyed uh, the different eras that you went through. I mean, Roman Britain, Victorian, World Wars. I mean, you, you really covered a lot of ground in your novel. As an author, like when you were, pulling your story together, what era was your favorite one to write? 
Oh, gosh, you know, I've always been interested in Victorian England because during my time as an English major, we studied a lot, read the great novelists. I love George Eliot. I love Dickens. Um, but I was surprised when I actually got to the section set in the First World War that I was enjoying that section most because this is a book about women women's roles and the constraints on women through the centuries. And it was at that time that things started freeing up a little. Not a lot, but women still had a bit more choice and a bit more freedom about what they could do. And I felt the constraints come off me in a really odd way, you know, as if I I unbuckled those Victorian stays and, and uh, could breathe. And so I, I, I really enjoyed that part. It was quite astonishing to me. <laughs> um, I also, I love the premise of your book, uh, like a, a thwarted love story that, that crosses so many time periods. Where did you come up with the concept for this? Oh gosh, you know, I almost don't know. Um, I, I have, I have ideas for various books always floating around in my head. And at one point, maybe a dozen years ago, it occurred to me to start writing them down. <laughs> and Times Squared was already one of the ideas. The fact that of somebody slightly unmoored in time, encountering different eras and finding out what it was like to live in different eras, um, not as you know, Queen Elizabeth the first or, or some great uh, scientist, Marie Curie or, or somebody like that, but as, as an ordinary woman coming up against what, what we had to face through time. So where it came from, I no longer remember. It just, it just was there. <laughs> 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 and what would you like readers to know about about Eleanor and and Robin? Um, about them, I think one of the main things about Eleanor is that as the way that I think many of us feel, we're a bit smarter than our circumstances permit us to be. Um, especially for women facing the constant mansplaining and put downs and, you know, being, I've actually recently um, was lectured on the way the CBC works, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I worked there for about five years. Um, so by a man. And I think Eleanor is a person who, like us, is just smarter than that. And having to learn how to deal with, I think she's actually a lot more tactful than I am. Robin is someone with a calling. He's a soldier. Mm -hmm. When he jumps, when they jump around through time, unfortunately, as Eleanor's Aunt Clara says, there'll always be another war. Wherever they find themselves, he's fighting. So it's, and that's one of the things that keeps them apart a lot, although fortunately they did have leaves. Yeah. But um, I think about him is that what we're dealing with is the cumulative damage that people can suffer from, from years of stress and, and what it was like in this case for a partner to have to cope with somebody who needs help even before he knew it. So he's he's a wounded, very sexy, damaged, <laughs> yeah. deep person that somebody who is smarter than her environment has to, loves very deeply, and also has to cope with some stuff that's not easy to cope with. I, as a reader, I, I kind of felt like I had a little bit of a crush on Robin with those gray oh. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Leslie, what are you currently working on? 
I actually, given the pandemic, guess what, had a lot of time to work last year and I managed to finish another book. It's, it's now historical, although it's set during the Cuban Missile Crisis, which isn't exactly the 19th century. It's finished, it's going to be published in 2023, but I mean, it's finished in a draft form. My editor has it and what I'm waiting on, uh, it's okay, Susan, I'm not waiting that much, but uh, is the editor's notes so that I can do a re rewrite before as it enters into the, the publication process. Oh, that's exciting. Can I ask the title or no? <laughs> um, it's called Far Creek Road. It's set uh, in suburban Vancouver, um, very near to where I grew up, although not precisely there because it's quite fictionalized. I call the suburb Gross Valley. The story involves a family that moves into the neighborhood who might or might not be communists. And of course, this is the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis and great, you know, when the world almost ended, it really came as close to it as we ever did in a fight between communism and our capitalist system here. So what happens when a couple who might or might not be communist arrive in a tense neighborhood? Ooh, so um, we will keep our eyes out for that in 2023. I'm definitely intrigued. And Leslie, Thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. We really enjoyed hearing a little more about uh, Robin and the lovely Eleanor's love story. Thank you very much, Crystal. It was lovely to be here. Uh, for viewers out there, I will put links down below to Leslie's website so you can um, learn more about her and also purchase a copy of Times Squared. Be sure to come back in two weeks time because I'll have another author, Catherine Gordier, and she will be discussing her memoir, Breathe, Cry, Breathe. Thank you for watching.